What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this uh, Sunday evening, February 13th, 2022, about 6.05 p.m. California time. Latest quake out there on the earthquake map out here shows, uh, well, quite a bit of movement out here around the world. Uh, no recent earthquake here within the last hour, according to the USGS map here. Doing some maintenance on my Earthquake 3D uh, app and uh, taking care of some back issues with uh, some uh, weird stuff going on here with the stream lately. So we're working on that in the background. So a lot of movement out here in western Texas, it looks like uh, about 13 earthquakes or so within the last uh, 24 hours kicking up here in this area where we have typically seen earthquake movement uh, to the northwest of Pecos, Texas. Now there is specifically definitely some fault systems out here. You can see that earthquake activity within the last 30 days or so uh, in that region. And uh, there's definitely some fault systems out here. Let me show you guys real quick the, uh, the uh, fault systems here on this map from the USGS. Stand by for a minute here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This page takes a little bit of time to load here, but we'll get it. So we'll zoom over here to the <clears throat> western Texas area and uh, take a look at this area north west of the Pecos, Texas region. And there's a... Uh, well, these guys aren't really showing it, but there's definitely some fault systems in this area. I know there's some uh, a little bit further west here that they're, they're uh, showing here on the map near the Delaware mountain ranges, but uh, some other fault systems within this region as well. Um, and it's just kind of in this area where there has been some uh, gas and oil rigs and whatnot uh, taking place out here. They're scattered out and about. You can see them all over the place, folks. These are not beautiful farmhouses out here in western Texas. They're uh, pumping and gas well operations similar to what you would see up in Oklahoma and whatnot and uh, a lot of this activity is right around this region where um, all these uh, these uh, well and injection well operations are, are taking place. So uh, I'm not 100% certain that this is associated with specific fault systems in the Texas area. All I know is that they're very close. They have been ongoing for quite some time now in the western Texas area. And um, uh, today, definitely ramping up pretty significantly in the earthquake department with quite a few threes, including a 4.2 out there uh, in that uh, little confined region of the uh, Virginia draw area. It looks like right at the western edge of it. But as I showed you, there's definitely a... Quite a bit of uh, gas fields and whatnot out there. The depth of these earthquakes remain roughly about the same between six and seven kilometers uh, below the surface. So we're watching that area pretty closely. It's been uh, been on my target list here for quite a while. Kind of want to go out there and see uh, what is stirring out there in the area of Texas. Uh, western, uh, western, the rest of the country out here looks pretty quiet. Uh, one little lone earthquake here. In the uh, Blanchard, Oklahoma area, just a 1.9, well south of the Newcastle and the OKC area. Uh, I'm not 100% certain what's out here, but uh, looks like a little crick, little creek, how, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, most of the activity over here on this area of the world today, with a big push of movement here to the west, specifically right around the Mariana Trench where we've seen a pretty good swarm of earthquake activity kicking up here over the last few hours, uh, including two 5.7 earthquakes and two 4.8 uh, 4 and a 4.7 here right around the Guam area. Uh, things kicking up pretty uh, significantly in this part of the Mariana Trench. It has been pretty quiet um, today for the most part. But uh, that's uh, definitely changing in a big way today with all this activity kind of working its way in this region. can kind of pretty much draw an arrow uh, with all this activity here to the west uh, where this movement is taking place. Philippines definitely getting in on a lot of activity as well to the south. Quite a few fours and um, whatnot here in this region, including a 5.5 way down here south into the Indonesia region. A lot of deep movement. And some earthquake activity around the Tonga region. 
over the uh, course of the day today. Look at these earthquakes kind of coming in pairs out here, aren't they? Some deep movement as well. 4.4, the latest quake within this region at 524 kilometers. It's pretty deep movement there in the Fiji Islands area. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm just checking something as I'm streaming here and I'm uploading, kind of watching some uh, network connections here that uh, could get some folks in trouble. Uh, let's see, 4.5 in the New Zealand area around the South Island. A little bit of activity taking place here along this trench. Actually, well north of the trench here, but along this plate boundary. Hikurangi subduction zone extends up here into this area, north of Wellington, north of the uh, North Island here. That area looks pretty quiet for now, but uh, definitely some activity ramping up here in the Tonga region. Uh, along the Kerbadak Trench and the Tonga Trench. Most of it deep earthquake activity kicking up over the course of the day today. North of the uh, Manila and the Philippines area, we did see a 5.5, 39 kilometers for that earthquake and uh, some activity up here. Waiting to see if this is going to kick up here. This is some older movement around the Japan area, around the northern part of the Japan Trench, 4.9 and 4.4, somewhat deep into the subduction zone. This area has been relatively quiet for quite some time. And uh, just a matter of time before that thing pops and uh, creates another large earthquake. Uh, the Armenia area, we had a 5.4 4 earlier this morning. Uh, no renewed activity throughout this region of the world. Everything looks pretty quiet and for the most part on the USGS map. And the activity disappearing from the Atlantic area. This is some older movement here in the North Atlantic Ocean and also down there in the South Sandwich Trench uh, from earlier this morning. South America, no, uh, not really much to talk about here. Just the one little lone earthquake here along the uh, Chile area, Peru Chile Trench, 122 kilometers for the 4.5. Activity does continue here in the 3 range, though. The magnitude 3 not showing up here on the USGS map. There's definitely some activity kicking up here um, in this region. We'll go ahead and switch over here to the EMSC model, uh, which is pretty easy to bring up here. And I'll uh, scoot over here to the South America region on this map here. These guys kind of show a little bit more in the terms of uh, magnitudes here. You can see uh, up and down the Peru Chile trench area, seeing quite a few threes and twos over the uh, course of the day today. 2.8 looks like the latest quake down there along the Chile region. And some activity ramping up here in the Middle America trench as well uh, today. Quite a few threes and twos in that mix of activity in the Middle America Trench. Up here along the uh, area here, only one 4.7 on the USGS map off the coast of Guatemala. What do we got for West Coast activity? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, there's only a little bit of movement here within the last hour up here around the geysers, south of Clear Lake, around the Cobb Mountain area. Of course, the Calpine Hydro, uh, the hydrothermal plants out there, they own a significant amount of, of uh, land out there using steam from the heat below. Uh, well, they, they, they have a process that they do out there uh, along the hydrothermal plants to create energy. And a uh, little bit of activity uh, within the last hour kicking up out here. A couple of small microquakes induced, of course, thanks to uh, uh, the uh, operations out there around the Cobb Mountain region. No major earthquakes to report. I'm sure they're glad about that. Uh, 2.4 off the coast of the uh, Northern California region around Petrolia. 10.5 kilometers. Not seeing any further movement up here along the Northern California coast. This activity from last night, uh, or actually earlier this morning. 3.2 well off the coast of Oregon uh, with the Blanco Fracture Zone within view there. Go ahead and check out the trimmer map here while we're on top of it. And whoa, look at that number right there, 280. That's a significant amount of tremor activity. I don't think we've seen that here in the past, oh, I'd say the past three or four months. Uh, pretty good significant amount of tremor activity, mostly uh, uh, mostly confined here to the southern end of the Cascadia. You can kind of see it here on this map. If you go in your in your mind's eye and picture this diagram here, the, the uh, southern part of the Juan de Fuca plate, better known as the Gorda Plate here, subducting underneath the North American region here, down dip into this area. It's kind of where the very southern end is. 
little bit of activity up here to the north as well, still considered the southern end of the Cascadia, but that's a pretty significant number here, uh, something we haven't seen in a little while, 280 epicenters of earthquakes. I have been watching the uh, Mendocino live seismograph station throughout the day and still see earthquake activity out there on the charts, but man, these guys are not showing it. They are not showing the earthquake activity at all. The EMSC either uh, not showing any type of earthquake activity out here. And even though it's showing up on these seismographs, I'm, you know, one little 2.4. whoop de doo Okay, guys, we're reporting the earthquakes. That's not how it works, folks. There's definitely a lot of earthquake activity occurring out here uh, in the southern end of the Cascadia. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the tremor activity that we've been seeing today. Uh, 280 epicenters of tremor along the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, what do we got up in or uh, Washington region? Some further movement right around Mount St. Helens again. A couple small microquakes here over the last 30 days. Seen a pretty good swarm of activity. 100 earthquakes or so within this vicinity of Mount St. Helens. Uh, it looks like it may be slowing down. It seems like we're getting about three or four, four to five earthquakes a day. Uh, only down to about two today within the summit region. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Further activity up around west of uh, Mount Rainier with a couple small microquakes. Pretty deep though, 10 and 11 kilometers outside the volcano there in Washington. Alaska activity uh, stretching up uh, once again around Anchorage and the Denali area. Just some microquakes throughout the region. No major swarming along the Aleutian Trench. No significant earthquake activity to report in that area at the moment. Uh, what else we got here? Yellowstone National Park. Kind of want to check on this swarm that kicked up here uh, earlier this morning again. In this area of the park, a little bit separate from the activity we've seen a couple days ago around this region. Although, if you look over here around Maple Creek, there's definitely some earthquake activity ramping up here uh, within the last couple hours. Uh, two separate swarms at the Yellowstone region taking place. One over here. And one over here around the borehole area. I can see all that earthquake activity ramping up here. This kind of looks like fracturing fracturing of rock or um, ice. I'm not for sure what the snowpack is up there at Yellowstone at the moment. But uh, definitely uh, showing up on these other seismographs. So it's definitely uh, uh, either earthquake related. I'm pretty sure it's earthquake related. Because uh, it's definitely showing up down here along the promontory as well uh, with that movement. Although it has died down over the last couple hours, it looks like, in the last few hours in this region of the park. But over here, Maple Creek is showing an increase uh, in earthquake activity. So kind of bouncing back and forth there around Yellowstone National Park. Uh, let's see, Earthquakes Canada. I don't believe these guys have updated their, their uh, system in quite a while. It looks like 4.3. February 13th, 4.3 McPherson, uh, Fort McPherson. Let's see, way up here. Wow. That's a pretty good sized earthquake way up here. We haven't seen too much movement here over the last 30 days. 4.3 earthquake uh, outside of Fort McPherson. Uh, looks like depth of 10 kilometers. I wonder if the USGS is reporting this. Where is there a 4.0 threshold? Uh, wow, really? Huh. So these guys kind of reporting a 3.7. Let me t check that timestamp. 2052 on that. Um, let's go back here. 2052. Yeah. 2052. What a downgrade. Look at that. It goes from a 4.3 from the Earthquakes Canada map to a 3.7. And I'm really surprised they're even reporting that 3.7 because most of the time, internationally, even up here in Canada, they it's only 4.0 and above that they report. So that's kind of a... Kind of crazy. Needless to say, that's a pretty significant downgrade. Wow. Uh, moving on. Well, what else do we have here? National Data Buoy System. Anything in event mode out here across the world? Why do we got something kicking up out here? Out here in the Pacific, west of the uh, Vancouver Island Range, is something going on out here in the ocean. Let's see what we got here on this buoy. Kind of look at. I like to look at some stuff here. A little bit of a, a drop, if you will, it looks like. In the water column height 
out there at this specific station. Not for sure exactly what it is. Maybe a maybe a bird landed on it. You know, maybe a heavy bird. I, I don't know. But that's a buoy out there. And uh, that's kind of odd. It's kind of odd to have a, uh, a signature of that uh, a station out there. Just I don't see any other stations in event mode. But uh, definitely something kind of kicking up, up out there. I'm kind of working on, on the uh, live stream at the moment, folks. Just FYI, it's going to be down for a little bit. I mean, we're still streaming, but uh, the Earthquake 3D globe and the live seismographs will be offline for a little bit while I work out some connection issues here. I was, uh, you know, I don't know. I kind of I been having some issues here with the stream. I got some buffering overload, like someone sending me massive amounts of packets uh, because it was crazy. Trying to bring down the stream is what they're doing. Whoever's doing it has me connected to like uh, over a hundred different IP addresses. I did a, uh, a command prompt on the computer here to check the uh, connections, the T, uh, TCP connections and U UDP, UPD connections. And... Uh, and it showed me connected to like a hundred different IP addresses, and I'm only connected to, I should only be connected to the uh, sites that I'm actually on, and so I'm kind of working with that right now, kind of getting rid of that option. But I'm not for sure how that happened, but that could explain the uh, the attempts to bring down my channel, attempts to bring down the live stream by doing some type of buffer overload that would prevent me from uploading my data to YouTube. After about, it's about 15 to 20 seconds or so, if I don't upload data to YouTube, uh, it's, that's it. They cut me off. So uh, somebody knows what they're doing out there. But also, don't forget, I've been around computers for quite a while myself. And uh, I'll definitely uh, find out who's behind it because I don't think it's funny one bit. Uh, messing with somebody's computer, I believe, is a federal crime. Just FYI if you are watching out there. So just take that into account. Uh, I will find out who it is. Uh, what else we got? Solar weather activity. Let's go ahead and uh, check this out here while we're on it. Um, looks like, uh, ee, what do we got here? Green across the board, at least for the KP index, uh, at about a three. Pretty steady, holding pretty steady. A little bit of a geomagnetic forecast. It looks like a storming possibility tonight, around 30%, but diminishing over the next few nights here. Then again, that's all subject to change depending on what the sun wants to do, right? Sea flare sits at about 75% chance. M flare at 25. Solar uh, sunspots out, out there, 2946. Kind of looks a little on the wimpy, wimpy side. We'll see if that uh, amplifies up or not. 2941 departing. Goodbye. Sayonara. See you later uh, as it exits the uh, Earth side of the sun. Earth side up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm going to jump off here. The, uh, like I said, the live stream is on temporary hold. This is what you will see when you go to the live stream for now until I get everything uh, set back up and uh, um, do a little bit more investigating. But we will be back up fully uh, pretty soon. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. We'll chat you a little bit later. Please stay safe out there. And uh, have a beautiful Sunday evening. Peace out.